here's my last thing. It's um, a first world war dated, uh, 19 for 16 dated, um, Luger holster. Henry does not want to focus. But there you go, there's the deck. Um, it's basically exactly the same as first Omega ones because I love how I can use it. just use brown um, leather which is exactly the same as the first world war um, kit now how you take the logo out is well, this. that happens to my one because it's broken but it should pull this out in theory it's just a, a cap Luger. So that's basically it. This is the type 2 jump smoke. Um, so as you can see, it's got a rather weird contraption for the legs. Now this was so that when you jumped you could this would be flapping around and getting out of the way. So what you do is once you land and the pop is open. Okay. And sometimes they used to wear the weapon underneath. So then they'd be able to access their weapon mount, which would be here. Um, so, yeah. And so here is, uh, like I said, it's a type 2, I believe, um, which was used from 43 onwards. Uh, it's a splinter B pattern. Um, here it's got. Two pockets here and two pockets here. Um, these have both got leather um, toggles on, so so have these two up here um, to pull on. And on the bum here, here I believe it is, uh, it's got a place for a pistol holster. Uh, that's uh, for a flare pistol, uh, just in case you got stranded somewhere, you can fire off a flare. Um, and also just to illuminate the battlefield if you wanted to surprise some Tommies. Um, so their pockets are quite large. Um, inside my pockets I've just got a Felsomega helmet cover. Um, Spoon to be again. This I believe is a 1970s. It's got 71 snapped in there and that, that looks pretty official to me. Um, so. Yep, I don't have a Fashion Media helmet at the moment, but I'm looking to buy one. I won't call one, obviously, because um, originals, one, they're really rare. Two, cost an arm and a leg. They probably cost more than my um, parents and put together. Anyway, um, so, um, yep, these are the uh, pouches here. These, uh, the reason why it has so many uh, pockets is so that if they're Fashion Media separated from uh, his unit, or they knew they wouldn't be supplied, they can carry as much supplies as they need. So, this will pull up again. No matter. Anyway, so you basically get the idea. So, that's that. Um, so, this is a Richard Underwood as well. Uh, and I got it with the rifle mount there. And it costs uh, 80 quid. Not as really good. So, I'll show you inside that. But also, another interesting fact about it is it's got these which um, stop the sleeves from flying all the way up. And it also helps you keep warm as well. And the good thing about it is this is all pop poppers apart from the front, which means that you can. Um, easily take it off if you need to. So here, um, you can see the inside. It's got spaces here for belt hoop, belt, uh, belt hooks, but um, I don't wear them with this because I've only got one spare set and I'm going to use them in a different uniform. Anyway, so. 
here's the inside, this is a Miltec one, I believe. There's the thing. Uh, so, yeah, that is it. Uh, oh, it's got a fake RB number too somewhere. Um, here's the RB number. Fake, obviously. I have a Miltec stamped on it if it was. Anyway, so, that's that. So I believe these to be my original Italian camo um, trousers. Um, I'm not sure, um, but I believe they could be original. Uh, they got these funny suspenders or oh, braces um, that are really tight, so I'm not going to wear these for very long. But basically, um, these uh, I would have picked them up off an Italian power trooper. And the Germans, after 1943, when they took over Italy, after the Italy's, Italians tried to capitulate with the Allies, um, the Germans took over the whole of Italy and captured lots of these, so they were also done and on the subject of Italian camo. Here's an Italian camo uh, SS cap. So, that's... Basically that, these are in very good condition so I'm going to try and keep them that way and then take them off. So they have a slit here which allows you to um, access the pockets of the trousers and they have reinforced knees um, to break around them I believe. They're not that like a, a panda. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Two pouches on all pockets, I should say, and the side of legs to carry things such as maps, flares, etc. Now, here I am wearing my MP3 key version um, underneath my, um, which were underneath my tiny jump cables. Um, so, yeah, I got my original, no, not original, 70s uh, gem braces, but they're almost exactly the same. Now, I should be wearing a Flieger Bruiser, but I don't have one, and that's not incredibly inaccurate because what happened in Normandy and in Italy, because it got so hot, the Fashion Media used to discard their uh, Flieger Bruiser uh, during combat, and for example, in Normandy, with some Fashion Media units, they used to discard them. And the lucky ones that managed to get out of the Fally's uh, pocket, uh, they, quite a lot of them, when it turned up to December 1943 with the Ardennes campaign, uh, kick, kicking themselves because they discovered their, their lovely warm woman tunes. So, that's basically that. And um, this is my um, mouse gray shirt. I'll take my braces off just to show it. That's it. Um, I modified this from an RF uh, shirt. Um, I, need to, I, believe, I believe I need to uh, make sure I uh, put it in the sunlight to fade it a bit. So it's a bit of that so, um, here I, it's got the pleats and the pockets here and here. Um, that I made them by taking off the epaulets. Um, I believe I've done a, a modification video on that. Um, so I'll probably put the link in the description. So, yep, here um, I've basically set up the front as well. And basically the only thing that's wrong is I need two buttons for here and here. Um, I've got things to attach uh, shoulder boards. And so that's basically it. Um, I've also, I'll, I'll just show you this rather quickly. Uh, this is my insignia for uh, Luftwaffe uh, uh, visor cap. I'll show you my SS1 to check how it will work. So the eagle will go here, and this part here will go around here. I don't have one at the moment, uh, but if I did, I would get one as an NCO's. Um, I also need to, uh, to get. I think I've already said this um, Fashion Mega helmet. So that is basically that. Last but not least, guys, 
This is my M24 Mauser. Um, bolt action, five round box magazine, original sling. I've seen pictures of Fashion Mega carrying these. So yeah, the only thing that it's missing is the extractor claw which is gone. I'm going to try and find one. If you guys know any places where I can get one from uh, in the UK, that'd be very helpful if you could tell me what it is. Um, I'd be very grateful. Um, and I need, need the back of the bolt and the safety as well. That's really it. The main thing I need is the extractor. Um, and so it's missing the cleaning rod. It should have one there. Um, the Germans captured lots of these. Uh, these were manufactured in. Um, first of all, these were manufactured in FN uh, Fabrique Nationale Herschel in Belgium, <coughs> and um, and then the Belgians basically used these uh, and they lo loaned these and they made them on commission for the Yugoslavs and Chinese, uh, but. This one's a Yugoslav one, um, because the Chinese ones had markings all over the stock. And this has also got a German number inside the back of the bolt. Um, I took the bolt, the back of the bolt to bits and found in the spring, it's got a little spring here, some German serial numbers, so I know it's been captured by them. Um, so, the banner. fits on like so and the reason why it's got a hook at the end is because it's so long that um, if you don't have one it will it'll fall off uh, this sadly because it's a Siamese one very nearly fits but I mean that is just far too long that piece of metal is too long and if it was a bit shorter it would fit anyway so um, that's basically the end of my Fashion Mega gear. Um, so, comment, subscribe.